open your big board escape free without magic as a wizard. The rules are simple. Wizard only with no multi-classing, no spell casting of any sort. And of course on honor mode because I'm not a filthy casual. Join me in this video to see me try to beat the game without casting any spells. I might go on a hate this. This is a magical show eater, also known as Gael Dicarios. He got dumped by Mistra, a literal goddess of magic, in an attempt to move on from his former fame. He has taken on the challenge of saving the Sword Coast without the need for magic. But first, a makeover. That mullet was so 1492, bestie. <laughs> Looking after Gale this run is his guardian, Alminster at home. Yeah, I mean I tried. Speaking of Alminster, this video is sponsored by Dragonair, Solemn Gods, who is having their legendary Alminster appear in the D&D collaboration event, which is live from the 23rd of February. Check the link in the description. With over 10 million downloads, Dragonair is an open world strategy RPG, which has elements from tabletop, such as dice rolls, character customization, and dungeon battles. Let's give it a little play, shall we, to see what the game's about. I found myself in the land of the gloom. Some spooky boy captured us and offered us as a sacrifice. But we somehow survived and we meet a new companion. I'm no Tira. Next we meet Hexandra. She did convince us to head to camp and set up a cooking pot. And here's our first dice roll of the game. Yo, I got 15. Next I found a dwarf in distress. Lend a hand. So I saved his skin. That was a big help. So get this right. I just saved this man and he wants me to steal a dragon scale. I mean, I'll do it. Not because I like helping people. I just like stealing stuff, alright? If you like what you see, participate in the second phase of this collaboration event. The iconic Drist and AO2 joined us for phase one. The phase two introduces much richer game content and events. Join Elminster in an all new D&D collaboration story to defeat some master and participate in the new event. To get dice skins, an Elminster artifact and more exclusive items, Dragonair is available on Windows PC, Mac and Steam and on the Epic Store. It's also available on both mobile platforms, Android and iOS. The download link is in the description and the pinned comment, sweetie. Hello, it's your pal, gal, and I can't cast any magic. I'm on the beach, send help. Speaking of help, do you really have to stare that long before helping? Okay, I kinda get it. How is this possible? Next, we find a hint stash. And guess what's in time? That's right, some spade. Pots. If we can't get on the wave, there's alternatives or aren't. Do you see this backpack? This man is so damn bad that he's gonna resort to conning people. First, he's gonna entice them by giving the backpack for free. He then opens the backpack and stuffs it full of goodies. Shadow Kitty was then selected. No time to dally. And she double clicked on the backpack. Sitting the trader menu, he then scammed the trader of everything in the backpack. Let me work my magic. Feeling satisfied about himself, he went to bed. This is where I found out about his surname. Mr. Dakarios! Yoo-hoo! This is Tara the Tressum, and she's so precious, I love her. She's so nice that she still looks out for him. Even though Gale is a big dumbass, we find out that he has to eat magical crack rocks just to stop the never absorb in his chest from blowing up Thayrin. Now eat up. If you explode and kill us all, I'll be free. Curious. So he listened to Gail's only friend and consumed a magical artifact. Gail was still hungry, so he got a taste for some goblin feet. Though I'm not sure I want to know why you're so skilled at that. Shadow kitty darling, I love you. Next we meet Withers and get a hyling. And I named this hyling the most inspired name. Mummy Mnorkers. I respect everyone to is in, making sure to stay level 1 for the next game. We visit Auntie Ethel because she's got the goods. I meant strength medication. Each time we level up, Auntie stocks free more strength elixirs. Rinse repeat until satisfying. It's awfully nice to get a medical rebate. After collecting his prescription from Methel, Gail ventures towards a man pass. I'll protect you. Not that one. Alminster passed on a pretty depressing message. Apparently, Mister wants Gail to blow himself up. Yikes. Hey, at least he doesn't have any magical substances anymore, right? Tell me you aren't going to go through with it. We can't besting. It's a no magic challenge. Continuing on with our adventure, the group needed safe passage through the Shadowcast, so Shadowheart was tasked with obtaining the Moon Lantern, as she was immune to the lesser effects of the Shadowcast. She fired an arrow from the high ground. Begging to be robbed. 
keep going. Making her enemies chase after her, and she managed to kill a goblin, turning it into a shadow cursed monster, fighting its former allies. After picking them off one by one, she was left to face a drider by herself at level frame. Karnas got stuck on the low ground for a few turns, then wisened up and jumped next to her. Shadow Heart disengaged and jumped to the low ground. And after a very slow and painful 49 combat rounds, we got the Moon Lantern, giving our party the freedom to walk in the Shadow Curse. Shadow Heart needed to go after such a long encounter. I must keep going. The girls camped every single trader at Moonrise. Have you ever seen a sale that's 100% off? Incoming drip check. Anyways, we're heading to the tea house to collect our level 4 prescription. We actually ended up with 29 elixirs, and the party enjoyed some drinks by the river's hand. Gale wanted to test out his newfound strength. You know, kidnapping's part of the trade sometimes. Next on Gail's business plans were hyena ears, and the party hunted down some gnolls who <laughs> let him cook. Seven potions of Spain. Speaking of a cone, Gail had a large one coming up, so he collected every single smoke powder barrel and fire wine barrel from the goblin camp. Okay, this next part is where I lost some of my sanity. I knew hitting things with weapons would not work for this challenge, so I started buying explosives of tally. After I buy the explosives, I would partial rest, which is long resting without any supplies, just to refresh her inventory. Then I would go about buying the explosives again. So partial rest, buy more explosives, rest, buy more explosives rest by rest by rest by rest by oh my god i'm so done oh um i ended up with 900 kilos of explosives but before we can use any of them we have to clear the shark on that what damage are you serious my party there's literally no damage even with the elixirs and high decks before i started recording this video i honestly thought substituting good gear and weapons instead of casting spells would actually work i get that you can only attack once a turn as always in this is just depressing oh my god i hate this i couldn't even win this fight Hey, Rivers, honey. Oh, Tara's here. She delivered Gail a letter from Elminster. It pretty much said, Don't listen to Mistra and unalive yourself. After some twisting and turning at night, we woke up to the shard trials. The first shard trial was a piece of cake, with Shadowheart jumping through the scam as a shortcut. The second shard trial was a mess. Mummy Milkers ate countless spells. Hey, I'm not the one casting them, but there's nothing substances can't fix. Oh my god, what the hell, Bestie? She delivered the final blow. And we got the Emble Gem. With the next Shadow Trial, Shadow Heart drank a potion of glorious vaulting. And that she did to get the gem. As for the final gem, Gail went invisible and just grabbed it. The gems were placed, and the party found themselves barefoot in the Shadowfell. I've actually never done this dialogue before. I told Balthasar to take Night Song to Kefric. The reason being, A, I didn't want to fight Kefric at the tower, and B, I didn't want to fight Balthasar here. I can no longer suffer your company. Be grateful I don't rid myself of it with a blade. Wait, I'm sorry. We can fix this. There is no we. Not anymore. You would be wise to forget me. I can only hope I one day forget you. This is Shadow Hunt's replacement. Okay, everyone, you gotta cheer on. You have a video to rig on before we can see Kefring. We need to kidnap his daughter Isabel from last line. This line of work is not for the weaker hunt. I think the moon looks so pretty. We returned to Kefring, and he was very pleased to get his daughter back. Wait, this seems a bit too easy. What's the catch here? I'm trapped in a pod. Send help. Gail was the first to get out. And he used an invis potion and bailed. Balthasar straight up one shot, Miss Milkers. And the other two members did so little damage they're trying to get out still. The other two went down. 
Gale was left by himself. So the plan here, right, is to resurrect from embers. Can someone explain to me how he still has an action point? Anyways, we use that action point on Lizelle. My injuries need tending. God dang it. On Lizelle's turn, she revived Astarian and grouped up tight to throw a healing potion. The starring then invised the whole groom. When the zombies couldn't find us, we left combat. Next, we face the hardest boss in Anima, the platform lift. Let me know in the comments if it has claimed to save. This must be it. The end of the absolute. No, don't do it, bestie. You have to move on from Mistra. It's time to be a gamer. We did a group invis. Aelin <laughs> was freed. Then I tried to get rid of the Mind Flayer. And he got his revenge. Anyways, his 19 smoke powder bombs and three barrels. Lazel took one for the team. After defeating Kefric, we had to fight Merkel. My strategy was just to send the starring men and drag the explosives onto the fiery ground. That is 424 kilos of explosives. crew felt so tired and weary from carrying all them barrels, so we packed it in for the night, eh? Only to be woken up by a Gipyanki ambush. The battle started and the strategy was quite simple. Our favourite wizard delivered some speed to Lazel, meaning she could have two actions, one being dash to cover enough distance to the portal, and the other being disengage, not to get fisted. She safely reached the portal and we're in the astral plane. And in this astral plane, we encountered more Gifyanki, but they were no match for the power of steroids. Is that a space gummy? Whilst making his way through Reverington, Gale decided to splurge a bit here, using his gold on travel. After a brief but lovely visit to the Underdark, it was back to business. We made up of Gortash, who proposes we form an alliance. Together we rule Faerun as kings. No, more than kings. Gods. As a god, really? Reunite the crown with the Dead Three's nether stones and Carsus's design might yet be completed. You could wield the power of a god. Foreshadowing is a narrative that we met up with Helminster who tells us that Mistra wants an audience. He wasn't impressed at all with the Kriya Nikasas. The crown is not the answer. I promise you that. Before seeing Mistra, we head to Figaro Facemaker Pentagon. But jokes on him, we didn't even spend a single penny. You look well. Thanks, I got it on sale. Meeting up with an ex is always hard, especially when they still exist, which is the exact same sentiment Mistra showed us. She was so disappointed that we didn't blow ourselves up, you know, to destroy the Priana Casas. She offers a chance for forgiveness and a cure for the Neveries Orb in Gale's chest. That is if we return the crown to her. Crown yourself. Gail Dakarius, and you will learn what it is to carry such weight upon your shoulders. I mean, you are carrying a lot of weight there, Mistra. Let's go. Let's go. It's time to bowl. On our quest for the crown, we need the Neverstones, and the easiest way to Orin is through the Unholy Assassin questline. After our first victim, Old Maid, approaches us, you must kill once more. And that we did. <laughs> Old Maid shows up again and we go to see Saravan, who wanted us to kill a stupid elephant. After a lovely nice bath, hey is your hair different, Oren? Anyways, Gail had a cunning plan to evade Oren's assassins here, and no way you saw this one coming. That's right, we're gonna use substances here. Completely bypassing this ambush here. This next technique might be a bit controversial, but this is my personal method for Oren, especially on challenge runs, where combat isn't an option. Oren can be a bit of a blocker on Onamone, as she has 10 unstoppable every man and an insta kill edict. Okay, I'll stop yapping, let's get into it. I'm going to set up the highest chance of succeeding my dice roll, as I only have one chance at this. First, I put on the risky ring for advantage on attack rolls. Then I slurp an elixir of cloud giant strength for 27 strength, and the usual, an invisible. Potion. We fly down to the arena and let's give Oren the Yate treatment. 
Combat will start, but that's okay. Gale will just take one for the team. I send Mummy Milkers in to get the Never Shine. You know what? That's alright. We have really good healthcare in Faerun. Feeling accomplished after our second Neverstone, the party hits to slain, only to be interrupted by vampires wanting a starion. Take him if you want, just keep it down, I'm trying to rest here. Oh, thank you for your unerring support. Unfortunately for me, I still have to fight them. I was only teasing ya, cause we all know I'm an Astarian girl, right? If you're wondering where the fireworks came from, well I went invisible here, and went into the basement of Flogears, and then we got collecting. There's a tripwire here, sweetie, be careful. There's also a lever here, which you can pull for a secret room. Well, there's another tripwire, sweetie. You know, I collected every single smoke powder barrel here. Remember Tally from Act 2? We're gonna do the same trick here. Buy some fireworks, punk shoe without any food, fireworks, EP, exploity boys, <laughs> fireworks, rest, bye. Okay, okay, get the point. Like in all seriousness, I spent like an hour doing that. And I had to play Gale this playthrough. I, I, I got bloody. Next we meet up with Gortash. Excuse me, bestie, what are these shoes? Hand me the nether stones and we will rule as one. Fuck off, you dumb. Oh, well, yeah. You've got a backbone and the makings of a leader. The Dark Lord Bane blesses our alliance. With Gortash on our side, there's only one thing left today. Admire Gale's hands in this. Ray, ray, ray your bane gently down the stream. For a nice little swim, we finally meet up with Gortash, and by means, I meant punched him in the gum. <laughs> you damn fool! We are on the cusp of confronting an entity beyond comprehension. We need to work together. Sorry, my hand slipped there. What a coincidence. So did my foot. But unfortunately for Gortash, there's only room for one young and handsome hero in the Sword Ghost. And he got a taste of karma for kicking us in the shins. Die. We reached the upper city, and by we, I meant everyone apart from Astarian. There was no chance in hell that we would win any fight, so I went invisible and walked past every single enemy. And just before climbing the brainstem, I made the rest of my party invisible. Wait, I entered combat? Larry, you patched my skip, didn't you? Look, I could've used Gal's Orb, but I didn't want to use any Nevro's magic for the run. I wasn't expecting this encounter and wiped. And unironically, if I still had a Starion, I would have finished channeling on the crown. Anyways, I tried again on custom mode. And this time, knowing that my invis give wouldn't work, I tossed the speed potion before climbing up. My full process was simple. I couldn't kill anything at all. So all I could do was rush through the crown and pray. The Emperor had two action points and I had to save one for channeling. The other one was used as a dash. I jumped and stood next to the dragon, measuring out my levitate ability so I had enough movement to get to the ground. Next I sent Mummy Milkers to help out Squidward. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Okay, um, I sent Lazelin to help Squidium. And he completed his flight and started the channel on the crown. Gale also flew to the Empress side, supplying them both with invisibility. Lazel took a 77 damage hit. And Mummy Milkers somehow survived against three disintegrate spells. But she couldn't dodge a barrage of magic missiles. The girls had the brains in now, and was down to the Emperor and Gale to save the day. 424 plus 182 plus 32.3 plus 23.5, 761.8. So I am not in danger, Mistra. I am the danger. The brain crashed into the ocean, and Gale somehow salvaged the crown and the stones, inheriting the pair of casters. He then meets up with Mistra, who is not impressed at all by Gale becoming a gun. The Weave will never answer to you. It's okay, I'll just let her go to voicemail anyway. Tara, sweetie, I missed you so much. Ugh, I thought the beard was bad before, and now it's 
glowing. In all seriousness, this conversation actually hurt. Dale lost his only friend in the world, the one that actually cared about him, and it sucked so bad. What's the point of power when you end up alone and miserable anyway? I suppose this is goodbye. You know what, whatever, I'm just gonna cast magic now. Gale tried to sculpt Astarian into Astararian. <laughs> the party soon came to a close. And with it, my time with you, sweeties. Thank you so much for watching and putting up with my voiceover. I was really sick during the recording and I'm so sorry about that. I'm grateful for your time as always. Good day.